Today we're going to look into highlighting in Emacs. If you've used Word or other word processing tools, you know often you can highlight text uh, for some temporary or, or useful purpose. It turns out we can do this in Emacs too, and, and it has some limitations we'll get to uh, towards the end. But the gist of it is we select a region, and then we add a font lock face that sets the background and uh, if we want a tooltip. Um, one of the limitations I found is the tooltips are kind of fragile and it seems like this variable here uh, often gets help echo in it, especially for me because I use button lock a lot and it seems to set it and what that does is delete the the tooltip. So here we remove it and it seems to work. So let's take a look at, at what highlighting actually looks like then. I've bound it to uh, super h and so I can just type that and I see some highlighted text right anywhere uh, I want. Now these are transient and they disappear when I close the file. So we need to think about a way to uh, save these and one of the ways we're going to do that is take advantage of the fact that we can set a property here I call highlighted and set it to be true and so then we can find all instances of the text that has this property highlighted. Okay, so let's look at first a way to get all of the highlights. So here we're going to uh, scan through the buffer and here are a bunch of temporary variables and we will look for uh, cases when we can find a property at, at the current point that has highlighted and when we do we set the point to that position and then we find the next change and we get the color and the help echo so that we can potentially save them. Okay, so this is uh, basically getting a corner case and uh, this is left over from a previous example. So let's run this and see that in fact we have the two uh, highlights. Here's the start, here's the end, the color, and um, the tooltip. I should point out if we highlight over this we see the highlighted tooltip, uh, which is coming from this text right here. Okay, now we have a nice list. Uh, we can think about saving that list. So we'll generate a file name here. I'm just going to make it a dot file with a dot highlights extension. And then we can uh, save it. And what we want to make sure is every time we save the file that we save the highlights. And so I add uh, a hook function here so that every time we save, it's going to save that. Okay, so if we uh, do this, let's, let's execute this and now save the buffer. Now if I run this, we see we have two highlights uh, saved in, uh, in the file. Now of course you would want to read these so that when you open the file, uh, the highlights will be loaded. And so here's a function that does that. It just opens that file, uh, loops over all of the entries in it, and um, and then applies them back onto the buffer. And we want to make sure that this gets run when you open a file. So whenever I open an org mode file, this function will run and, and do it. All right, so that's the basis for the highlight function that is only in uh, Light Salmon. Now we can use Helm colors actually to select anything we want, any color we want. And so here we're going to give ourselves the opportunity to uh, highlight in any color uh, that we would like. So let's, uh, let's rebind this now to, to Super H. And now we can uh, highlight some text, Alt H, and pick any color you want. How about a nice coral? Um, actually looks kind of like salmon. Let's pick a, a nice green. Uh, etc. So we can highlight these and now again if we um, save this it's going to save those automatically. Now eventually you may want uh, to see all of the highlights that you have so here's a highlight list function so let's do that and now this will give me a clickable list where I can I can go to any any one of these uh, um, highlighted texts. Looks pretty handy. Um, now in Word, when you, when you do highlighting, what you normally do is click a button and then you can use your mouse to click uh, and select it.
So here we're going to define some, some highlight in green uh, function and we'll be able to uh, turn the mouse on and turn the mouse off. So let's turn the mouse on. And now I can just use the mouse to select anything like that and I have to turn it back off. So that it, it acts like, a, like it did before. All right, we can do some really funny things. Uh, here are two examples where we make like a rainbow and a, a selection of, of blues. So let's look at, at what these are. That just makes a, a funny kind of highlights here. They're just for fun because it turns out we can't actually save all of these. Uh, because of the way we define the save code, it only takes the color from the first point and saves it for the rest of it. Okay, now how about adding some of your own tooltip? Maybe you want to highlight and have your own note uh, attached to it. So let's see, here's our, our code. It's basically going to ask you for, for a note. Let's do uh, light green. And now if we highlight over this, or mouse over it, we should see uh, the tooltip, but it looks like, uh, looks like we may have already lost this, this variable. Let's go back up here and, and get rid of it and see if that fixes it. Let's try editing the note. There it is. That's what I referred to earlier as, as these tooltips being kind of fragile. Okay, so now what if we want to uh, get rid of one? Uh, eventually you'll want to do that. So here is a function to clear a highlight. Here's a function to clear all the highlights. It might be nice if we made one to clear them in a region, um, but I didn't do that for this. All right, so let me get to the end here. Uh, we, we define a few common colors, yellow, blue, pink, and green. Um, I like to use hydras for, for my menus, so I make myself a hydra, and then I bind it uh, to uh, super H, and here we just add a, a menu uh, to the org mode to remind me of all the things I can do. And now let's talk about the, the limitations. First, let's look at what happens with my new hydra. Down here you see all of these uh, options. I can, I can change the color. Can do all kinds of interesting things. Let's add a, a note. This is a fast one that just puts uh, a purple color. We can select any color we want. Let's do light goldenrod yellow. That looks terrible. Uh, what else is in here? We can uh, list our highlights and, uh, and click on them. We can come in here and uh, let's get rid of this because it looks so bad. That is delete. Oh, I forgot to run highlight clear. That gets rid of it. Uh, and so we can do all kinds of things, and every time we save, uh, all of these should be automatically uh, in, um, saved. Let's go back and uh, check out and see if these actually reload. Maybe I forgot to uh, run this. And there they are. So I forgot to add uh, the hook, challenge of running uh, interactive code this way. But we can see and scroll down that uh, all of our 
things were done. Like I mentioned before, the rainbow gets lost and we get to the bottom of our known limitations and you can see all of these things there. So it's kind of fun. Um, there are some limitations in keeping it synchronized. You have to use these hook functions. These don't actually export in uh, LaTeX or anything, so you would have to write some pre-processing code that would get the list of annotations and then somehow add the LaTeX highlight code or the HTML markup code before you do the export uh, to get that to work. It could be done, but uh, we're not going to do it here. Anyway, that's, uh, that's all there is. Uh, maybe another limitation to point out is I don't think these copy and paste. Right, somehow that, uh, that code, that text gets lost. And so, so these uh, still have quite a few limitations compared to what most people are used to with uh, other highlighting codes. So that's all for today.